Hey, this is Bo with Focused Engagement. Um, excited for you to join me today on this uh, demo of SharpSpring, which is the automation platform that we uh, recommend uh, for. I got my SharpSpring shirt on, so we're we're in SharpSpring mode. We're happy. We're excited. So this is going to be a really high level overview, uh, mostly because if I was to go into everything that SharpSpring could do, uh, we'd be here for a day or two. So. Uh, Today will be a high level overview. We'll go over some really, really cool things that SharpSpring can do for your company. And uh, over the course of the next few months, I will create individual videos for um, all the other features. So let's jump in right away. And uh, so first I wanna show that we have two different dashboards or two different um, um, sections of, of SharpSpring. We have sales and we have marketing. And some of the menu items um, are the same between the two. Rather, you're in sales and marketing, you can go into uh, contacts, you can go into visitor IDs, but there's differences uh, in, in what you can do. So, uh, if you, so if you've got a sales team, they're going to be spending most of their time in here. Your marketing team is going to be spending most of their time in here. Uh, but um, either way, you have access to both. So... Uh, we're going to start with automation because obviously this is a marketing automation platform. Uh, you you are you've come into this because you're interested in marketing automation in one form or another. Uh, most likely you you uh, clicked on my landing page uh, and filled out the form and stated that you wanted to. Uh, see a, a recorded demo as opposed to a live demo. I say most likely because I will probably um, repurpose this and use it for other things as well. So you may be watching this on YouTube or I may have just emailed it to you directly. I'm not sure yet, but uh, right now my purpose for this is uh, from my landing page into the demo video. So uh, most likely that's how you're seeing that. So, um, so we'll go into the automation. So in automation, we have two primary areas. We have scheduled events and personas, but we're going to go over workflows and action groups today. Uh, so a workflow is essentially a, a visual-based um, program that, that tells uh, SharpSpring what you want it to do in the automation. Okay, So um, every workflow starts with a trigger. And we have a lot of different options to trigger a workflow. So this particular workflow is actually the, the, the workflow that I created specifically for this uh, demo video. So I started it with, um, you filled out a form that I had on my landing page called Marketing Automation Demo. Now, one of the beauties of automation, why this is such a great tool, the whole concept Really, the whole concept between uh, uh, of inbound marketing, digital marketing, whatever you want to call it, is uh, in general is to be able to get the right content to the right people at the right time. Okay, it doesn't do any good to send content to somebody that is a not interested in your product right now, uh, b if they're uh, if if they're if they're already a lead, you've already talked to them, and they say they're not interested, you, they say contact me in six months, so you contact them in six months, only to find out that they purchased from somebody else, okay? So you you uh, you reached them at the wrong time, okay? So it's the right person, right time, with the right content, okay? Again, it doesn't do me any good to send you uh, content right now or talk about website development because you're interested in the automation, so we got to get you the right content. So... Uh, so this workflow, the triggers, and then the next feature I'm going to show you really helps us to, uh, to hyper-focus uh, the workflow attention to the right person with the right content. Okay, And then we'll talk about the right time here shortly. So in order to do that, I have this filter. So when you filled out the form, or if you didn't fill out this form and you're still watching this, you can... You can fill out a form. You have different options in the form. In this particular form that I had, and I'll show it to you just in case you didn't fill it out, um, you had the option to either um, to either watch this video or to have a live demo with me, in which case I would have sent you an email to book a meeting with me, and we'll go over meetings here in a second because that's a really cool feature. 
or uh, to do a, a, a recorded video, which obviously is what you wanted to do. So that's why you got this. So I have a filter that says, uh, what type of demo would you like? This is the field that I created. We'll go over custom fields as well. Um, this is the field that I created. What what type of demo would you like? And the two options were recorded or live. Okay, so you obviously chose recorded. So that is what we have here. So this workflow will only trigger if you filled out that form and you chose uh, that you wanted a recorded demo. Okay, so then we're going to get into our actions. And the actions are cool because there's a lot of different things we can do. Okay, so the first action I did is I want to assign this, uh, this lead to me. So uh, the reason why, it, you know, I have this override existing contact owner. So if we had, if, if, if uh, somebody filled out this form and they were already in my lead database, uh, and assigned to somebody else. I'm overriding that and I'm assigning it to me. And the reason why is because I really, really love marketing automation and I wanted to be the one to do these demos. So um, my sales team understood and I'm the boss. So I get to do that anyway if I want. But that's up to you whether you want to override it or if you want to assign it to somebody. The other thing you can do is you can assign it to whoever or you can round robin it. So it could just be assigned to the next available um, salesperson or whoever you have doing your sales uh, um, in the in the list. So if you have three people, it'll just go from one to the next to the next and just keep round robbing. Okay. So then obviously one of the key features of this is sending out automated emails. So you, you don't have to think about it. And that's the beauty of this is it it does the work for you. You you think about it up front when you create it and then from there it does the work for you. Okay. So we have it uh, send uh, the email um, recorded demo first email and uh, you can tell it to send it uh, during just business hours or not that's up to you uh, I figured you know what if you're doing this at midnight because you can't sleep I'm gonna send this to you at midnight and so I'm gonna send this video right away or the email right away so you can click in and watch the video maybe it'll help you sleep if it helps you sleep let me know I'll send you more videos I could be your new uh, uh, way to, to fall asleep at night uh, so, we can end it there. We have got a workflow. It is doing its job, right? But if you want, and we will go in, in, in uh, future videos when we go into more depth in the workflows, you can do cool things like uh, uh, delay time. So you can say, hey, I want to wait X days, uh, minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months, right? And then I want to do something else. Do you want to create a new trigger to look at? Do you want to go into an action group, which we'll go into in a second, or do you want to do another action? So um, really you're only limited by, well, you're limited by the actions that you can do, but other than that, you're limited by your own imagination, okay? One of the cool things, what you have to think about here is, how would you handle this lead manually? If you got a new lead, what would you send them? And then how long would you wait before you did something else? And what was that something else, okay? Whatever that is, add it here so that you can automate it and you don't have to think about it until uh, the time is right. Okay, so, uh, and when I say the time is right, one of the cool things we can do here, I'm saying cool things a lot, but we'll get over that. But one of the features is uh, we have lead scores. And the higher the lead score, the more likely is that that lead is ready to purchase. And so we can monitor that lead score, send them uh, uh, nurturing emails and contact information and uh, and newsletters and that. And we can and and we can watch how uh, automatically. We don't have to manually watch. We can the the system will watch and see how engaged that 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 lead is. And when they are, are at a certain point, then uh, it will notify your salesperson or whoever the contact manager is or the lead owner is, it'll notify them that, hey, this person is very engaged. Maybe it's time to reach out and talk to them. So uh, you don't, so the, the beauty is, is that it really takes a lot of time off of your salespeople's hands of all the manual stuff that they have to do and allows them to focus their energy on the client on the leads that are most likely to purchase now okay so in doing so 
it helps really improve your return on investment and uh, and drive more uh, customers, get more customers into your business. So, um, and this really works across all all businesses. I don't care if you are uh, business to business, business to consumer. If you sell products, if you sell services, if you're uh, brick and mortar, or if you're e-commerce, this works. I have clients in in all of those. Okay, and it works for them. Uh, the only thing I'd say it doesn't work for is if you sell fifty cent widgets and you got to sell a hundred thousand of them a year, a month to to do anything. This may or may not work for you at that point. But with that one exception, and I could probably even make an argument that it would work for that kind of company. This will work for you. Okay, so that's a high end um, example of workflows. Uh, we are going to go into action groups next. Now, action groups. Action groups are basically um, mini workflows. Okay, they could be actually called in a workflow. So if we look at our uh, action, one of the things we can do, oh, whoops, not there, we can call an action group right here. Okay, so why you'd want to do that is depending on the type of business you have, you may have hundreds of workflows. Okay, and they're triggering different emails. Uh, uh, and uh, and several workflows could actually trigger the same email depending on situations. So rather than having every time you create a workflow, having to say, all right, I want to uh, send this email, then I want to wait a, a day, and then I want to send this email, and then I want to wait a week, and I want to send this email, okay? And you do that over and over and over. It gets repetitive. So you can do all that in an action group, okay? And then just in the workflow, call that action group. So... Uh, where did oh yeah it's up here so um this action group is uh date time based right so there's lots of examples of how a date time based uh, action group could work i have a client that is a moving company and uh, before we set up uh sharp spring for them they would they would book a move and then they would put in their calendar uh, three weeks before send this email and so it would pop up and she'd have to she would have to she'd have it in a notepad and she'd copy it and then she'd paste it into her email and then she would modify it a little bit to, to personalize it for that person of their the time of their delivery of their of their move and their name and then uh, you know most of it would be um, cookie cutter and uh, so she would do that in three weeks and then she'd have another reminder pop up in two weeks and another reminder pop up in three days and then it just it was a lot of manual work so what we did is we we did uh, we created a, a time-based action group we created a, um, a custom uh, field that uh, said data move okay and they put in that data move and then this action group would take over from there so uh, so in this case, I created one called Really Cool Webinar. So if, you're, if you do webinars, let's say you do a webinar every six months, uh, it, what you can do is, uh, this is dates, this is before the interest. So in this case, I said three months before, but again, it, you got uh, time before we have minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. So really, really customizable, okay? So you can say three months before, we want to do something. Send a specific email, add them to a list. We'll go over lists. I may touch on them today, but we'll really go over those. That that's another video. Um, but then you can, you know, so you can send four, five, six, however many as you want, emails or actions uh, prior to your the the date of interest, which in this case is this really cool webinar, and then after you can do more. So maybe after a week after you want to send out a, um, a survey. How did the webinar go? Did you learn anything? Maybe you want to send out for a review, uh, which is a really good use of this, uh, of this date time. In fact, uh, I use this for some of my clients that are in the mattress and furniture industry. Uh, they put in, uh, we created a custom field, the only manual part they have to do is they have to go in and they have to uh, say that uh, here's the delivery date. And if it changes, then they have to go in and change the delivery date. But after that, you do that one little bit, you take that 30 seconds to do to do that one manual thing. Everything else beyond that is automated. Okay. So I have it send out um, a reminder of the delivery, 
uh, before and then after. Uh, I actually have it for mattresses. I have it send out uh, 30 days after. Hey, how's the mattress working out for you? You know, do you have any questions that we can answer? Can you review the mattress itself on their website so that they can, so that the, so as people are looking at mattresses on their site, they can see which ones were reviewed uh, so you can get customers' opinions on different mattresses. And we also send one out for review of the business. Okay, so we can manually or we can automate all that so that you don't have to think about it. We just have to think about it up front. And if we want to go once a month or so, we look at it and say, hey, let's tweak this and make it even better. Okay. So that is automation in a nutshell, visual workflows and action groups. Um, the other thing I want to go over is it's in the sales section. So you, you don't see it here in marketing, but in sales, we have meetings. Okay. If you tie this to your calendar, if you're using Office 365 or uh, Google um, uh, G Suite, I know it works with those two. It may work with others, but those are that probably covers 99% of email anyway. So um, you can set it, you can tie it to your calendar. Now it actually ties physically to your calendar. So uh, I, I I did an appointment earlier to show you a demo. So first of all, I'm not going to show you my calendar because I don't want you to see all my other meetings. So, but you do get a reminder or a, a notification as soon as somebody fills it out. Uh, I use my own name, so it's saying you're all set, Bo Ray, because Bo Ray has successfully scheduled the meeting. But um, but you do get that notification, and then it sets it in your calendar. Now, the other nice thing is, and I'll show you that right here. Okay, so I booked that calendar. This is the notification. As soon as you, somebody books it, this is the page that comes up, so that they can add it to their own calendar if they want. But I set it for Friday, August 14th, 10.45. Now, I refreshed my meeting page here. So here's August 14th. Now you see there's 10 to 10.30. And then 10.45 is, 10.45 to 11.15 is gone, right? It is already on my calendar. So uh, this, this software will not allow a duplicate event. So... If you have other meetings, it doesn't have to be through here. It's looking at your entire calendar. So if you have a meeting set, uh, even personal meetings, you're going to be gone for an afternoon. So long as you put it in your calendar, time can't be booked here. Okay. So the nice thing there is that uh, you can you can use this link. You can put it in your uh, email signature. You can put it on your website, uh, however you want to use it, and you can you can be confident that. So somebody can't book a time where you already have a meeting or you have a scheduled day off or whatever. So long as you're putting all your information in your calendar, this will be accurate. Now you can create uh, several different meetings. So uh, you can see I have meet with me uh, and these are only the ones that are scheduled for me. Yeah, every salesperson or every, every, uh, Every user you have on SharpSpring has their own calendar so that they're not intermixed. Okay, so um, I have meet with me. I have review our demo platform. I have our recommended next steps. Okay, and the reason why you'd want to create different ones is um, mostly for the duration. Okay, so if you have one that's longer, you create a own calendar meeting so that uh, so that it automatically books that time. So you see this is 30 minutes and uh, I have 15 minutes in between. So the reason why you're seeing, you got uh, like uh, 12 to 12.30. Um, um, as a time and then 12.15 to 12.45. Uh, so the 30 minute email or the 30 minute sections. Okay. So, um, that is why that 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 is based off of that 30 minutes. So um, the other really cool thing that we can do with automation, man, I gotta quit saying really cool thing. The next key feature I want to go over. So here, first of all, here is all right. So we are in contacts now, and this is me and I use it a lot so I'm going to show you the life of the lead in a little bit and you can see I have 94 different leads because I I do a lot of testing in here 
So here is a contact um, view. So depending on the type of phone system you have, we can actually integrate in text messaging. So you can see right here running tests with uh, uh, our, um, our, our SMS, uh, our, our VoIP system. So um, you can enter your notes here on if you had a, you know, whatever your conversation was, had a great conversation. Uh, had a great conversation. Man, if I could spell. Talked about dogs. I don't know about you, but I'm a big dog lover. We just got a brand new little beagle, and we love her. Man, she's a... Uh, uh, she's a lot of fun, but she has got a lot of energy. So we add our note there, and now uh, that note will always be there. Um, and then we have our meeting scheduled for uh, August 14th at 10.45. Now, some other things you can do. You can, if you're talking to somebody, you can book a time right here. Uh, you can pull up your email, and that's just going to pull up whatever your email um, um so I use Outlook, so it just pulled up my Outlook email app. Uh, you have Smart Mails, which is really cool because we can go in, and here's a list of all the emails that I have created. So we can go into this demo. So if you're talking to somebody and you want to send them an email right away, the reason why you want to send it here as a smart as opposed to just clicking here is this is more trackable. Okay. I, I can tell when somebody opened the email, I can tell when somebody clicked on the link. Okay, there's a lot of things that we can we can uh, tell based on a an email that was created and sent through SharpSpring. We can track it all. Okay. Now I can hit quick send. Uh, and if I do, I actually think it'll tell me you can't do it because I've already received this email, I think. Nope, I have not. So uh, typically speaking, we have it set so that somebody can only get an email once. That way you don't have to worry about if they happen to be in two different lists and you're sending the same email to two lists, that they're not getting the email twice. It'll only send an email once. Now you can have that overwritten, which I may have done on this because I know I'd be testing a lot, uh, but um, I don't recommend overwriting that. Uh, unless you really, really want somebody to get an email multiple times. So, um, but uh, if you want, you can also, oh, yeah, see, I don't think I've sent that before because now it says contact has already received this email. I cannot send this again. Uh, but if I was to hit personalize, I can now make some changes to this. So if you had a conversation with them and you want to put some stuff right here, uh, in in this email before you send it to them about your conversation, you can do so. You can hit schedule, and you can either send it right away or you can send it at a specific uh, date and time. Okay. Uh, again, if I hit this now, it should tell me. Um, well, it says successfully scheduled. Again, I think I probably told it to that I that it, that I can send it multiple times. So, um, but. Um, if I had that set so that so it can only send once, because I'm I'm almost positive the first time I I know I've sent this to me before. In fact, let's go to life of the lead and I'll show you. But you can also set up tasks right here. So uh, the task, and a lot of this you say, well, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, software have have these features. Yes, that's true. The nice thing is is that this is all in one platform, so you don't have to have multiple screens open. Uh, you can uh, you know you don't have to use one piece of software to send your emails. You don't have to use another piece of software to, uh, to uh, as your CRM. It's all in one platform, so you can monitor everything from one place. Okay, and uh, I'll show you another reason why that's really important. Is if we look at first of all, here's custom fields. Okay, so here is the uh, really cool webinar that uh, I created. It's date time. Uh, Bay. So again, if we put our webinar of August 28th at 11 p.m. Now that that is filled, that date time um, action group right here, it, now it has uh, a, a date of interest for at least for me. So it, it can you can have this um, auto populate based on forms that are filled out, or you can manually do it as well. Uh, so it really depends on how why you're using it as to how you want to do it. Obviously, for my moving client, 
this is a manual, they manually populate this, okay? Um, I told you a bit ago when when you first when you first got the email in, in, in this in this action group that we had the filter what uh, when a contact has the field what type of demo would you like is a recorded demo uh, this is that field right there what type of uh, demo would you like so if I was to change this from recorded demo to live demo I would not trigger this action group even though I filled out this um, this form okay so uh, again it, it allows us to hyper personalize and um, make sure we get the right the right content to the right person at the right time so uh, and speaking of at the right time another feature of the visual workflow one of the triggers that we have available to us is they visited an important page okay it could be any important page and we we set the important page uh, returns to the website so we have these are the these are the um, uh, some some really powerful triggers because we can say whatever the page is this important page how many times do they have to visit it is it one time and these are these are people that are leads so these are people that you've already talk to at some point they've already interacted with your site in some way okay so uh, is it is it one time or do we want to really make sure they're engaged say you know they have to visit it three times or more right uh, this actually works really well even for customers so let's say you sell them uh, one service but you have other services available right so uh, if we uh, create the trigger uh, that uh, they have visited an important page and we put it to a service that they're not currently using when that customer if that customer visits that page we will be notified so that we know that hey this customer is interested in a service that they're not currently using with the, with us let's reach out and talk to them about that service or let's send them an email uh, that's these are triggers so let's go back to actions Let's send them an email more about that service, and then re and asking, do you are you interested in talking to this us about this, and allowing them to say yes or no, and then that can be another trigger condition. So yes, they said they want to talk to us about this, so we will uh, we will reach out to them. No, they said that we're not. They don't want to talk to us about that. That's fine. We can still put them into a uh, an email drip more about the service and see if we can get them more interested. Okay. So maybe right now they're just curious, they're not ready to buy, but we'll keep reaching out to them until they are. And we can create another uh, group saying, all right, well, they visited once, so we, we send them an email. Now let's wait till they visit two or three times, and then let's reach out to them anyway. Okay. So again, really, really powerful way of making it so that you can reach out to the right person at the right time with the right content without having to think about it until the workflow is triggered and you are notified. So, um, let's see, I went a little off track. So, oh yes, yeah. so let's go back to uh, our contact information. So we have life of the lead. Now, I test a lot with me. So I have a lot of life in here. But what we can do is we can look uh, at what pages, I visited or whoever the contact is visited uh, I will brush on the other thing I'll brush on real quick uh, in a minute is chat bots but um, if I interacted with a bot the conversation is here so we can see that okay any forms I filled out is here any emails I sent oh that's booked a meeting um, any oh uh, Let's see here. Emails. Let's go. Okay, so here is a, um, a newsletter that I send out. Uh, it shows here open. If I happen to have clicked on anything, it would say clicked here. So we can see what they did. Now, everything I just showed you is also, since we are tracking it, it is triggerable. So Again, if you went back and see, uh, looked at triggers, one of the triggers is 
visits from the email, right? So I sent out an email, they clicked on it, they went to our website, they visited us. We tracked that so now we can see uh, what they did, okay? So, um, so really, really powerful. So uh, the last thing I'm gonna uh, touch on today, uh, we didn't even go into emails. Um, really quick on emails. One of the beauties is our emails can be, there's there's variables that we can create. Um, let's see here. Let's just look at this miscellaneous one, edit this email. We have for any form or any field that we have, so we have all the, the custom fields that I showed you earlier. Um, so we have all of these custom fields and you can have hundreds of custom fields. We have higher fields, uh, main, main contact fields, uh, industry, um, company name, title, whatever. Okay, so we have all of, all of this information and anything that's in a field, we can create a variable for. So if we go into our emails, uh, we can say, so right here, the, hey, discover how marketing automation can help your business, right? The, this company name here is a variable. So since it was on the form that you filled out in the first place, I captured that information. I can add that as a variable to the email. Why that's important is uh, we can get into hyper-personalization, right? So uh, rather than this just being a, a general form field and just saying your business, we're talking specifically to, uh, in this case, I'm talking specifically to you. I, I've got your name. I've got your company uh, name. I can have other variables in here of other information that I have uh, picked up from you. If I know your industry and I want to have a whole section here uh, based on your industry, I can turn this this section into a um, dynamic section, dynamic content, and I can and I can say if it's in this industry and create rules, say based on this rule, add this content okay so it really allows us to hyper personalize the content that we're sending to our leads or our customers so that that piece of content resonates more with them and it looks it looks like you spent the time to 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 personally write out the email and send to them but you didn't okay it was automated it just we used variables that we've collected to make this um, to make this personalized to to that leader, that customer. So it, it again, it, it, it always comes back to sending the right piece of content to the right person at the right time. So this goes into the right piece of content by being able to dynamically change it and hyper personalize it. Uh, they are much more likely to engage with you. So um, all right, so real quick, chatbots, and I'm going to do a whole thing on chatbots because chatbots is a really great feature that they've recently added. But um, if you was to go to my website, you can see the bot down here in the uh, it'll pop up here in one second. Now, it could be a bot. Um, since I'm recording and everything else, this is taking a minute to load. So uh, it could be a bot or it can be um, uh, an actual conversation with a live person or it could be a combination of it. So it could start out as a bot with, with whatever questions you have and then um, you can take it from there. And so we have, I want to talk to a representative. Okay, well, let me get a representative on the line. Uh, you can say, hey, I, let me... Uh, so connecting to a live agent, obviously I'm making this video. I'm not going to jump on that, and it's me, so I know not. To, I don't have to, but I was just notified on my phone. Yep, that I have somebody waiting to talk to me. So I know that that somebody is ready to chat. So, uh, so you can have it go through a bot at a certain point. It's great for Q and A's or whatever else. And then uh, you can at any point say, Hey, I want to talk to a live agent, and then it's going to kick it over to live agent. Okay, so. Um, you can use it to generate leads because you can ask questions in here and gather information just like you can any form. So it, it becomes a really powerful tool as well. And again, there's lots of different bot technology, but since this is integrated in with uh, your marketing automation platform, it, um, 
it's all, all the information is centrally located all in one place. You don't have to think, oh, I got to go here for this. I got to go here for this. You can just see it all in one place. And it also allows you another me another video I will do is we can go into reporting and it can show you um, uh, you can create reports based on any of this information so that you can see what's really working and what's not. And that's one of the keys here is we want to know what's working. We want to see what's not working so that we can improve upon it. Even that even something that is working, we want to be able to tweak it and make it even better. Okay, so we A, B test constantly uh, and we find out what works even better than what's working now so we can get the best results. So the longer you do this, uh, the longer you're on the platform, so long as you are focused on improving, the better your automation and the better your, your website is going to perform, the more leads you're going to generate, the more leads you're going to close, the, the more customers you're going to continue to contact and, and either get uh, referrals from them or gather valuable information from them to help you sell to other people or sell more products or services to that customer, which is going to increase the lifetime value of that customer. So we integrate all this together, and the bottom line is it, it improves your business without necessarily improving or uh, increasing your you don't need more salespeople to do this. You don't need you don't need more employees to do this. It does it automatically. So that is my high level view of SharpSpring. If you have any questions, I invite you to reach out to me. Um, if you did this through my landing page and you filled out that form that I showed you um, earlier, um, or that we talked about earlier, I don't even think I ended up showing it to you. I'll do that in another video too. Um, but if you if you came from there and you're watching this uh, on on the through the email that I sent you, there's going to be a form at the bottom of this that you can fill out that will trigger a bunch of workflows and emails. It's just it's just fun, so you can see how it works. Um, the emails won't necessarily mean it. it'll just be explanation email, so it can it can walk you through it a little bit more and, and demo even a little deeper uh, by by actually playing around with it. So uh, so I invite you to fill out that form. Um, if, if you're watching this any other way and you want to do this form and go through this workflow, let me know and I'll, and I'll send you a link to the form. Um, but other than that, if you have any questions, email me, go to my chat bot, uh, call me, uh, message me on Facebook, however you want to get a hold of me, uh, please do so. We'd, happy, we'd be happy to help. On behalf of Focused Engagement and my team, thank you very much, and you have a wonderful day.